when you're sitting across from a guy like Lou and he's saying, I can't talk about this, I can't talk about that, but he has flown out here to this conference on MUFON. He's a part of a, at the time, growing endeavor called To the Stars, has a family at home from I when talking to other people who know him like James Fox like good guy goes about life you know does his thing if he had possession personally of information that quite literally defined the meaning of life and perhaps did it on a level where it was the type of stuff that if people found out the world would riot and humanity would end because we'd figure out that there maybe wasn't a point to it or like we're all simulated or something like that I don't know how he would sit there and, like, not to go, like, graphic with it, but I don't know how he wouldn't, like, I don't know how he'd want to live or interact, you know? So when I think about, because he's the one facing the camera, right? We don't know mm -hmm. all the guys that aren't facing the camera right. and what they think and whether they're at the bottom of a whiskey bottle right now. But he, by all intents and purposes, seems to be, like, a barely normal guy. I don't know him, but that's just how it comes across. You know, if it were that deep... Or if he knew that a secret alien overlord were running the earth from below the sea or something like that. I don't think he'd be able to sit there and have a conversation on camera at the fucking new MUFON conference. You know? I got, okay, I got to tell you, you haven't seen the whole conversation because we talked about that. And one of the things that he told me, and, and it's, it's in the interview. The, the whole interview will see the light of day one day. But I'm, I'm being, even though it's my interview, I own it. He agreed to do it. He signed off on it. I still have gotten a lot of resistance. From who? From people that represent Lou. And who are these people? Is it like some secretary or is it, you know, someone deep throat on the phone? Media reps. People people that have that that that, that see him as a valuable piece of intellectual property. And what do they say to you? And do they do they call you? Do they show up at your house? Like how does that it's not it's not that clandestine um basically when i uh when when i sold the the doc to to the distributor you know it was originally going to be called the elizondo tapes and people that represent lou came and said no you can't even use that interview unless we agree to let you and i said well it's my interview i'll do whatever i want to with it and then the distributor came to me and said well we understand that it's your interview but you're going to have to play nice with these guys or we're not going to buy your movie and we're not going to release your movie. What so, year was that? This was back when I when I signed the deal to about two years ago. So it was the movie was originally going to be called the Elizondo tapes. Yeah, that's what my original contract was, because I have a whole bunch of stuff, more stuff that is very very controversial that's in my interview and within some other information. So, based on this resistance, and then the fact that you were getting a lot of other information that wasn't necessarily directly related to that, I I, I turned the corner with the movie because. Um, a, they weren't going to let me call it the, the Elizondo tapes, and B, I, I'd gotten. That's when I brought in Michio Kaku and Gary Nolan and all these other people yeah. to make it bigger than just Lou Elizondo. Because if I continued down the track of making it about Lou and making it about the stuff that he told me that 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 you know to this day is not out, um, I was going to have a lot of problems getting the film out. In Were fact, you scared of that? I was very scared. Yeah, yeah. I've been. Um, it, the film came out April eighteenth, twenty twenty three. And until midnight on April 17th, before I saw that icon pop up on um, Amazon Prime, I was still was not convinced it was ever going to see the light of day. The, the story of, of the beginning of this ordeal of making the film all the way to seeing it out in the public, if, I, if, if making my next film means I have to go through what I've been through for the last two years, I'll, I don't care if I ever pick up a video camera again as long as I live. It's it's been I can't even describe it. And there's a lot of stuff I just can't even talk about. And there's stuff that even if I did talk about, you'd just think I was crazy. But you said it's less clandestine than we think. It's pretty straightforward. That particular element of it was less clandestine, yeah. What other elements are there? Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. You're you're giving a lot today, so I'm okay with that. Well, I mean, you know, the thing is, is that I was I was totally under surveillance the whole time I was making the movie. My phone, and this comes with the territory with being part of MUFON. They're under surveillance anyway, by by people that are keeping track of what the UFO community is doing. It just it comes with the territory. You take it for granted. Your phone's tapped. They're watching your computer. 
uh, if they feel like it, they're following you. Every once in a while, you find some little evidence in your house that like somebody's what? like like stuff moved. That there's no explanation for how it got moved. It's a little calling card. We can we can we can get to you. You know, like it <laughs> it, it happens, and it sounds like something right out of a freaked out movie. And I don't want to be the guy out there saying it because it just makes me look stupid. But I've lived it. it, it it's part of the thing. And the, the information in Accidental Truth, there's a lot of people that didn't want that stuff out. And there's, and there's still a lot of people that don't want it out. And there's still an active effort to quash the film even though it's out. And I have had to, at every turn in the process of making this movie, I've had to understand what I was up against. And I've had to adjust my trajectory to sidestep their latest attempt to put obstacles in front of me. Despite the fact that it came across as far more out in the open as you would have thought. You know, I and, I, and my head's well, go, well, my no, head's like going what, on, my like, head's going like, on. What Hollywood. do you mean? Meaning the the way you started this by saying it's a lot less clandestine than you think. No, no, the the situation with with um with media representation by some of the people that were in it, some of the threats that I got over using certain things in the film. Um, that, what, is, what does a threat look like or sound like? If you put this out there in this way, I'm going to sue you. That's what it looks like. Okay, so fairly. So, so when I say less okay. clandestine, that's what I mean. Got it. You know, so nobody, it wasn't, nobody. It wasn't like you know, do you like your dog? Not directly. Like okay. No, 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 no. Okay. Because I still have the dog. So, you know, that's good. Yeah, that's good. You know, I, I just. No, I'm not. I, I was never like threatened in that direct manner. But I was. I was basically some of the content that was that was supposed to be in the film was pretty much nixed by the threat of the film won't come out. Some of the actions that I threatened to take to preserve my right to release the film was nixed in. You can go in that direction, but we're going to put your film on a shelf till it's over. And so the some of the powers that be that that managed to get a certain amount of control over the film used it to do as much manipulating as they could. And, um, and I did everything I could to get around that, including hiring lawyers over fair use, hiring lawyers over witness protection and, and, you know, whistleblower stuff just to find out, you know, what the implications were of revealing some of the information. And there's information that I didn't put in the film that could technically be termed as classified still. And if you put that out, even though you got it, from a non-classified source, you can still get in trouble for revealing classified information. Really? Yeah. If you, even if you don't know, if you know it's classified and you, if put, you, it, know. you put it out anyway, but couldn't you have deniability on that? Like I didn't, I didn't know it was classified. Really? You want to sit in a room with a bunch of FBI guys and try to pull that off? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I always forget they hold the cards. They, it's already predetermined what they're going to do. Thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.